Okay. So let's change gears a little bit uh, and let's talk about something new. We've spent a lot of time talking about direct search methods. Um, we'll now talk about something a little bit more mathematical um, in quadratic methods, so we approximate the function uh, with a quadratic, and that'll lead us to something very, very famous um, that you will have seen before, Newton's method. So here's where we left off with direct methods. You know, the nice thing about them was that they assume nothing about the function, uh, and they can work for unbounded, they can work for unbounded problems. But we had to have kind of a hack uh, to deal with the unboundedness, right? We had to do this um, slightly uncomfortable geometric search method to um, to deal with the, uh, the case where I didn't have a bound, an interval, over which to search. I had to find that interval uh, and, and, and force my problem into a, a, a bounded problem. So, you know, uh, the question is, is there a better way to deal with that? Is there something cleverer that I can do um, when I have an unbounded problem? And, you know, I've been pretty relaxed uh, about what I uh, assume about my function f. Right, but in a lot of cases, f is going to have some, we are going to know something about f. Right? We, do, we can put some very uh, pretty gentle uh, uh, constraints on it, some gentle assumptions uh, about f here. Uh, and then we might be able to come up with a more efficient method. So, for example, you know, here's one idea. Um, this is actually called a quadratic search method. So let's say that, you know, if I can... Um, uh, evaluate my function, then well, one thing that I could do rather than a direct search is if I'm looking for some minimizer of, uh, of this function in blue here, you know, I could evaluate my function at three different points. Right? So this is a different approach to what we've just done. So you know, uh, uh, we could, we could uh, evaluate my function at three points here and three points to find a quadratic. So being able to evaluate my function at three different points here um, allows me to fit a quadratic to this. That's the black curve. Uh, and the nice thing about a quadratic is that it's really easy to find where the minimum of a quadratic is. Right? It's at that point uh, in the middle. So the minimum of a quadratic is you know, negative b over 2a. So assuming I can do that interpolation of three function values, then the minimum of that quadratic um, is going to be pretty close. I mean, we can hope that it's going to be pretty close to the true minimizer of the function, which is just to the right there. And in fact, you could make this into um, an optimization algorithm. Once I have the minimum, I could take the three smallest points, which would be you know, a point around here, that point x2, and that point x3, fit a new quadratic to that, which you can probably imagine is going to um, uh, have its minimum somewhere to the right here, and I'm going to start getting close to the true minimum of the function. I'm going to narrow that search interval again and again and again. That's actually called something. That's a quadratic search algorithm. It's called the davis swan campy algorithm, or the DSC algorithm. Uh, and it's kind, of, it's kind of a nice method, um, actually. And you, know, the, uh, you notice that, again, I don't really need to know anything about f in, in that. I guess I need to be able to fit a quadratic, um, which is a little bit of work, but not too bad. Um, uh, and I don't need to have a bounded problem. right? Like, I just pick three random points there. Um, and I'm solving this problem without needing a, a search interval. Uh, but there's something better uh, that I can do. Right? So fitting a quadratic three points is one thing. Um, another thing that I can do, um, you know, if I'm talking about fitting functions, uh, then I can, um, uh, there's some other mathematical machinery that I can use. So let's actually um, define a slightly new problem here. So let's assume uh, let's make a few more assumptions on my function. So let's assume that f is smooth. Um, and by that I'll mean uh, that the first two derivatives exist for this function. So this is a lot more constrained than what I was talking about before. Right? So I have to have derivatives for this function uh, and I have to be able to calculate them. Now, uh, And if I make those assumptions, then I can solve this problem. So find the minimizer of the unimodal function. So I'm still going to assume that my function is unimodal. Uh, I'm not going to assume that it's a bounded problem anymore. I'm going to just have an unbounded problem, which is the R mapping to R. And let's assume that F has two derivatives uh, that are continuous and computable. Now, once I have that, uh, once I've uh, written that down, once I've assumed that F prime and F double prime exist, that immediately gives me a way to approximate this function. Right? Hopefully, 
this is sparking um, uh, something in your memory, uh, when you have derivatives, when you can evaluate derivatives of a function and you're looking for a polynomial uh, that approximates this thing, your mind should straight away go to Taylor series. Right? So Taylor series tells me, you know, this is not a Taylor series, this is a Taylor polynomial, of course, this is the first two terms uh, of the Taylor polynomial uh, for a function f. And so, you know, uh, if I know the uh, first derivative and the second derivative, I can straight away write down that function um, as a pretty good approximator for this. Now, with that, we can actually derive a... Um, with that, we can derive a, uh, an algorithm uh, here to, uh, to, um, to optimise, to, you know, to find the minimizer of this function. So that's my Taylor poly my first two terms of the Taylor polynomial, right? And that's approximately equal to uh, my function uh, f. So it's a Taylor polynomial about some point x k uh, for the function f of x. That's not exact. It would be exact if this went on and on and on forever, or if I put some error term in. Instead, I'll call this some um, you know quadratic, some quadratic x. Now I can find the minimizer. So this is a quadratic in x minus x k. All right, so let's think about um, uh, where the minimum of this quadratic is. So this is a quadratic in x minus xk. And the minimum of a quadratic um, you know, is at negative b over 2a. All right, so I could differentiate, do the first year thing differentiate that set equal to zero, etc., and I get that the minimum of the quadratic is at uh, negative b over 2a, where negative b, or this um, you know, quadratic, is in, I'll write this in q of x minus xk, perhaps. Uh, well, that's sort of my x term. That's my b, uh, and my 2a uh, is going to be that. I don't need the factorial there. So the minimizer of this function um, is going to be Right, it's going to be x star minus xk is negative b over 2a. So that's negative f prime of xk over two lots of this term here, which is just going to be f double prime of xk. All right. So my guess at the minimizer, so x star is going to minimize... Um, uh, you know, x, x star is the thing that minimizes this f up here. All right, so my, if I just rearrange this, you know, then x star is going to be equal to xk, take away f prime of xk per f double prime of xk. And now, you know, if my original function f was a quadratic, then that would just be the minimizer, right? That would be the minimizer of my function f. But for a general f, you know, that's not going to be exactly at the minimum. So instead, I'll call this a new guess at the minimum. Right. Uh, now, I need to have something here. I need to have that that's not equal to zero, right? Because Otherwise, this will break. I'll have a zero on the denominator here. Um, but otherwise, there's an algorithm that for finding the minimum of some function by doing, by doing a particular um, you know, Taylor series-inspired quadratic uh, approximation of that function. Now, what is that? That's exactly Newton's method. So you have seen Newton's method before as a root-finding method. You would have seen it probably uh, without, the prime, without so many primes here. So Newton's method as a root finding method is, uh, has got an f of xk uh, and an f prime of xk on the denominator there. Um, but it's exactly the same, it's exactly the same method. So finding the roots uh, of the derivative of my function f, so if I set g equals f prime of, uh, prime of x, uh, then finding the roots of the derivative uh, you know, the zeros of the derivative, well, that's finding a stationary point, isn't it? And that's finding a, a minimum or a maximum 
Um, so this is a method for finding a stationary point uh, of you know, the, uh, the antiderivative um, of, that, of that function that you've looked at before. There it is in pseudocode uh, at the bottom. I won't talk through that um, because it's pretty, um, it's pretty straightforward and you can probably figure that out by, um, by yourself. Um, but this is Newton's method. Now, I'm, I, I, I talk through this and we derive it and in a sec we'll, um, uh, we'll prove the order of convergence of this after doing some examples. Um, because it's the law, um, this is an optimization course, and in every optimization course, it is the law of mathematics that you must learn about Newton's method. Um, there are good reasons for that, which is that Newton's method is actually a pretty efficient method. It's pretty, actually a pretty good method for doing uh, optimization, um, as we'll explain in a sec. Uh, but for now, uh, that's it. It works as an optimization scheme just as well as a root finding method, um, and we'll do some examples in a sec. Uh, 